Developmental delays, learning difficulties, excessive fatigue, hearing loss, seizures, high blood pressure, joint pain, memory loss, miscarriage, stillbirth, kidney damage, damage to the nervous system, and even death. These are just a few of the side effects of acute and chronic lead exposure. Now, before I continue, you all may be wondering why anything that I'm about to talk about relates to Hopewell Township when our issues are with Alcoa Water Authority. When you hear about Flint, Michigan and the crisis that they had, you hear Flint, Michigan. You don't hear Karen Gotti Water Authority, which is who initiated the crisis. The contaminants, medical, corruption, and meter issues that I'm bringing before you all today does not just affect the MWAA customers. These issues affect, tarnish, and put a damper on the entire county even down to affecting property value. As you can all see in your pictures before you, the brown water and excessive rates are why I initially started this movement. We have 220 members and counting in a Facebook group that was created for these issues. After reaching out to multiple chemists, microbiologists, including researchers that conducted the testing for Flint water at Virginia Tech University, I have learned the science about what happened in Flint and how it is happening right here. When orthophosphates are not added to the water to act as an anti-corrosion inhibitor, all sorts of issues start to occur. MWAA does not use any phosphate-related compounds to combat corrosion of 100-year-old pipes. As the pipes corrode, bacteria begins to build. As bacteria begins to build, water authorities add more chlorine, which contributes to and speeds up the process of corrosion. Our water in the Ohio River tested for high amounts of fecal coliform bacteria. When a high amount of chlorine is present, they react with other ions and chemical complexes start to form, so they add even more chlorine. Once the pipes are too badly corroded, the chlorine becomes a useless disinfectant and reacts with organic chemicals in the river to create disinfection byproducts known as trihalomethanes. Trihalomethanes are human carcinogens. There's four. One of them is called bromodichromethane. We had EPA testing done on our water, and it is 176 times above the recommended health guideline for this contaminant. So, what do they do? They use ferric chloride to combat the trihalomethanes, which is just adding more chlorine. It is a vicious, a vicious cycle of horribly corroded pipes that leads to lead leaching in our water. Although no lead of, level of lead is safe for human consumption, the EPA has a limit of 15 parts per billion. Our initial tests that have been done on the water, our levels are in excess of 20,000 to, to 50,000 parts per billion of lead, which is 1,333 to 3,333 times the legal limit. The reason that the MWA is not in violation and has reports that don't line up with our testing is because their protocol for testing includes flushing the pipes for at least five minutes before any samples are collected, which allows for most of the lead particles to be swept out, thus manipulating the sample. EPA protocols for measuring drinking water quality involves letting the water sit stagnant in the pipes for at least six hours, followed by collecting an immediate sample. Our issues don't stop there. Most, if not all of the meters that the MWAA installed in 2014 are called census iPro meters that were manufactured in 2013. I did some research on the meters to figure out why the water authority charged me $742 for using 30,000 gallons of water in five days. Which, by the way, is equivalent to filling a large swimming pool every single day for five days. I don't have a swimming pool. There were no leaks. There were no running toilets. We had it checked out by two plumbers. But according to Robert Bible, the supposed leak magically sealed itself. My research concluded that there are almost a billion dollars worth of lawsuits against the cities, townships, and against the manufacturing company census. It was determined that one of these lawsuits in a court ruling that the census iPro meters manufactured between 2011 and 2014 are at high risk of catastrophic malfunctioning. 
Census determined that the defect in these meters was the sealing gasket that allowed for water to seep into the electronical components of the meters, thus causing them to malfunction, overcharge residents, even explode and catch fire. So many residents are being told that they have leaks. Some, some residents and even prominent business owners in this area are being charged thousands of dollars quarterly for water that they didn't consume. This leads me to my next issue. This one makes me the most mad. Money. For decades, this water authority has been involved with money laundering and fraud. However, the corruption in this county runs so deep that it's almost impossible to get any help on this issue. There are millions of dollars that have been taken to fix the corroding pipes that are over 100 years old. For example, back in the 80s, they took $8,000 from 40 different condominium unit owners to fix lines that weren't ever fixed. Or in 1994, everyone's in here today that has her check and everything. 1994, they charged $1,800 for the old Hall Avenue Water Authority customers that transferred over to fix lines that were never fixed. This issue has been going on for three decades, at least. And the crooks at MWAA have been getting millions of dollars for in grants, loans, rate increases to fix, fix issues that are not being fixed. Since 2001, our rates have increased four times. In 2001, our rates were 34.43. As of the latest in 2016, they're $75 minimum. We are all coming to you today to plead for your help. Not all of us are Hopewell Township residents, but nobody wants to help. Everybody wants to pass the blame on to somebody else. Nobody wants to help. I am a Hopewell Township resident, and I know that I am not serviced by your water authority, but I'm your resident. And I myself, I know there are a lot of medical issues. Sorry, I'm gonna start crying. I myself have had four miscarriages in the past five months. I explained. Everything came back fine. And I'm not the only one with issues. There are people that their house is completely deteriorating. That water that you have set right there, they want us to drink that. They say that's safe. Would you give that to your family? So I'm gonna leave with one last question. I'm sorry. Okay. If you walked into a restaurant with your family and your children, been a rude, unhelpful waiter, your water was black, and you found out it had poison in it. Would you be expected to drink that water? Not only to drink it, but to be overcharged on your bill. Or would you take it to corporate after getting no help from the managers? Thank you for your time. Because I spoke to them before. They've had some breaks down there. And that does cause some some water. I live on Cedar. I don't live too far from you guys. I got out of the purple water. I, I don't, you know, sorry to hear you, you, you say what you're going through. I don't have that problem. Uh, they told me I had a leak. My toilet was leaking. Yeah. So I, I don't know how much help we can give you, okay? I've talked to them. Uh, this was a few weeks ago when I heard there were some problems. And I didn't know where they were. When I talked to them, they said, they called me Buff. They said, Buff, what addresses? I said, I don't know. I heard they're having some water problems. Where are you working? He said, a couple weeks ago, we were down on Patterson. He said, we had about six breaks. So that causes some, some dirt in the lines or whatever. And they have to, you know, clean them out. Uh, of course, when they do fire uh, 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 hydrants, <coughs> That causes that too. Um, have you have you all been down to see see them? Have you given them your address? Have they come? They haven't come. They don't they do anything. The lines? Don't they don't do anything. Yeah. And I mean, I've had people that are generational here. I mean, uh, people that are back in the, have been here since the 80s. Their families and uh, you know, I thought this was just me. I really did. And then I decided, let me reach out to the community and see. And I mean, this has been going on since the 80s that nothing is being done. People have reached out. She's reached out so many times and she's been told by st office staff, you're exaggerating. I invited them. I, I'm actually now a resident. 
and sorry, she was <laughs> a little choked up. Um, so Where I've lived in Alcoop about two years. Oh, I'm sorry. My name. I live sorry, what is it? So I, I'm an Alcoop resident. I have called, I have emailed, I have reached out to every public figure in Alcoop and asked, why is this going on? I've never had to deal with this before. Um, and I get hit with this. It, it, if I call, they, I, I feel like they know my voice now or they have caller ID and they just dread picking up the phone. Um, it's the same thing. So, hi, can I help you? Okay, well, I have brown water today and it smells like the river. What's going on? Is there a break? Well, where do you live? I tell them, no, there's nothing in your area. So, okay, well, can I speak with the manager? Most of the time I get hung up on. Um, but the last straw was, <laughs> oh, I was so, I'm surprised I stay professional. I try to, I work in customer service, but, I was told by the manager at the Water Authority, and I'm not going to drop names, we all know who she is, I'm sure, that I woke up to brown water that smelled very badly like river or sewage or whatever. And she said, honey, I'm sure that you're over exaggerating the situation. And I said, you know what, I live in come up and check for yourself. And she said, Water Authority doesn't do that. And she hung up on me. Brown water isn't from the brown water. We're not complaining as much about the brown water. Excuse me, can't hear you, sir. We're not complaining. I mean, we're complaining about the brown water, but that's the contaminants there. I mean, we got lead in there. We have feces in our water. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that has nothing to do with the breaking of the water. Yeah, well, again, I live down that way. I, I live on Cedar Avenue. I've been there since 72. Have you had your water tested? They test it. They send. They You're send drinking records. Drinking the same out. water we are, huh? You're drinking the same water we are. Just because yeah, it's not saying. brown doesn't mean it doesn't have them contaminants. Right? Well, they, they get again. I'm not sticking up for. Them, I'm just telling you. I get. You get reports. We get reports every year or three months. Whatever they send it out. EPA, whoever they have to report to, test their water. So again, I don't know about all the contaminants. I, I have no no idea about that. We know. But yeah. yeah. Well, and here's the thing is that's what was proven is they're not following epa protocol for testing their water they're flushing all the contaminants and everything that could show up in a water report they're flushing it out before they take their sample and they right. take it right from the water authority not from anybody's any residents right. and that so water that we through tested the pipes. was at my house yes sir poor girl oh i'm, I'm sorry. Heather. Yes, <laughs> i've been called <coughs> So yeah, and that's the thing for us is that what they're doing is they're flushing. I live on. Um, they flush it first and then take the sample at the water authority. So they're not getting the impurities that rest overnight. So when folks get up in the morning and put their kids in the tub or go to brush their teeth, they're getting all the contaminants that have rested all night. So they're not following federal protocols. So it's a battle of who's SOPs they're going to follow. We're just asking them to follow the same SOPs that other states follow, and they won't. I have physically stopped down there three times. I have tried to travel to different job sites to find the person who runs the Water Authority. He will not have a conversation with me. I even offered to help him write grants to underwrite pipe replacement. You know, they, they have a... And, and he, they, they won't, they won't, will not meet with us. We get told where it's inflammatory, we're, we're out of control, we're hysterical. It's a great term. We should be happy. We're just up saying, water. yeah, right. If you're going, if you're going to charge me, it's, it's a contract, right? I'm going to pay you X. You're going to provide Y. That, that's all we're asking for. But because it's a water authority and not a water department, there are different rules, and the Pennsylvania Utility Commission does not oversee them we've even gone to the governor's office and and so they told us go to the local authorities go to local city councils if they will not meet with us we are to file a lawsuit so well, that's we would I like to meet with you because you have local residents that are on mwa that's what i was going to ask you if you ever went to the water authority meetings yes have you ever gone there yes have you ever gone to their council meeting yes yeah i just specifically myself had a private meeting with robert bible the manager at the water authority and he walked out on me he walked out on me. I had my 
my son with me, and I showed him how, how bad my son's skin. My, my son never had skin issues. It's not genetic. Nobody in my family has skin issues. And my son's eczema has become so uncontrollable. He is literally, he's one and a half years old. He is scratching himself to the point he is bleeding. He has been put on prescription strike creams. He has been to dermatologist after dermatologist, pediatrician after pediatrician, and nothing is working. Nothing is working. The only time I see it get clear is if I don't bathe him in aliquip water and I literally have to fill up an entire tub with gallons of water that I buy at the store. So we're paying. Why should we pay for this? Why should we be paying for this water that we can't even use? And not only that, I mean, I see somebody works at the sewer authority. This, this piggybacks off of that. They're telling me I, they're essentially telling me I filled a freaking swimming pool every day for five days. And the sewer rates, I have hope all sewer, they go off of what, what, what the water authority tells them I've consumed. And I didn't consume 30,000 gallons. I even had two plumbers come out to confirm that the first one wasn't, you know, you know, whatever. And there's nothing. There is nothing. So now I'm paying on top of the 742 bill. I have a $497 bill that just went to collection that we can't afford. I have three kids. I can't afford this. We're struggling as it as it is. We're dealing with medical bills as it is. I'm seeing fertility specialists as it is for all of the issues going on. And I can't even afford my bill. It's going to collections for sewer because of allocable water. And nothing, nobody wants to help. PUC, we're not under their jurisdiction. Nobody wants to help. Why can't we, and I don't know anything about how this works, why can't we cut ties without a cup of water? Why can't we be tied into center township's lines? Why can't we be tied? I know we're interconnected. I've read reports. Why can't we be intertied with Presswell water? Get the hell rid of them. They are not doing anything for us except for killing us and hurting us and costing us money that we don't have. Excuse me. Ma'am, what's your name? Me? Yes. And what was your address? We have a whole house water filtration system that we put on our house. It costs $5,000. It comes in right at the line. And we still have the nerve to have to replace all the internals in our toilets every two years and our hot water tank every three. One more thing. Sir, what was your name? And what is your address? Has anybody called the Environmental Protection Agency? We've called them all, DEP, EPA, we've called everybody. And what do they tell you? They, they pass it, call this person, and this person says call From who? Person. Call this person from where? Call the water agency? Authority. They keep pushing us back to the water authority. Yeah. Okay, what, uh, you know what, let, let, us, let us get our authority, uh, or our, our body here, to meet with them personally and see if there's anything in the works to try to get some of this stuff straightened up for you guys. When here's the thing, uh, they'll tell you right I'll tell you right now what they're gonna tell you. They're gonna say it's manganese and iron. And I'll tell you right now from our preliminary reports of testing, it's not manganese because our manganese levels are actually really low. They're low. It's not the it's not the manganese. We we can actually provide you with samples from any street that you want, with any parameters you want, at any time you want. We can show you videos, photos, we will provide anything you want. Is this, to, is to build this brown a water continuous or is it just now and then? It's oh no, it's all three days. It's more often than not. It's, it's not weak. just when there's water breaks and it's not just when there's flushing. I live, I live on top of We haven't had a break since 2015. Where you live on top Yes. Um, and we are told we lose our whites all the time, like not colors, but whites. We lose our whites all the time, and when we call down to the water authority, they tell us to run our washer two or three times. And so oh, yeah. the woman there just <laughs> put in her. Oh, and here's the thing too: when you go down to the water authority about your whites, that all of our whites aren't white anymore. So you go down to the water authority and ask them about it. They hand you. I'm not sure if you guys are aware or know about it. Um, they hand you. It's, it used to be called Rover Rust Remover. I'm not sure. I have it somewhere. 
what the chemical is now. It's a white powder. It's, a, I, it, it's yeah, called like iron out or something. Mm -hmm. They give you this to wash your clothes in, your whites, to get the stains out. It's true. I have the researcher from Virginia Tech University give me the compounds that are in this. The main compound in the stuff that they give you to wash your clothes in, you're supposed to wear um, a hazmat mask, what? gloves, an apron, and you're supposed to store it in this container, a cool area, blah, blah, blah. It's got oxacilic acid. And you want to know what oxacilic acid is? What it has in it? Tear gas. And that's what they want us to wash our clothes in. And it's more dangerous when it becomes wet. This is a sewer th or the water authority giving you this? Yes, yes. Yeah, they've been giving it for a long time. They used to give it in mason jars. That's the oxygen. Yes, yeah, that's right. It was 10 years. My name I'm bought, sorry. My name's. I live in. Myself, I bought my house in 2005. I have brown water every day ever since I moved in. Okay. Every day. Again, and that's that, that powder that they give you. You, you can only use it on your whites. If you have pink, yellow, orange, your clothes are ruined. And they don't care. I've got three kids. What am I supposed to do? Put tear gas on their body? Somebody has to help us. All right, let, again, as I said, let us, let us meet with them and, and, and uh, get together and see if there's something in the works to, to correct this or, or whatever. Can we bring up one more thing? Yes. Last one, go ahead. Okay, I'm and I'm 12. Um, the road, Mr. Bates, our road is treacherous. Are you in the road committee? Probably road. I Fair. mean, it needs to be paid. And they, it needs to first. Well, it needs to, you, know that, you guys keep patching this and patching that. We go on the other side to, to avoid this, and it's just, it's terrible. The road needs fixed. We're drinking brown water, we buy bottled water. Our water bills are way too high. I mean, we need to have something done. And here's the other thing. In the 1800s, I, in drive. I moved here in 1990. I have proof of the $1,822 that I paid to Alpaca Water Authority because a lawyer came after me several years after a lot of other people had it because I didn't have the money to pay it. And it was to pay for our water lines to be rerun the whole way down the drive that was never done. Never done. And what happened to those other 200 some homes that paid that money before I paid that I approved right here? Of yeah, what I where paid. did the money go? Where we did the money pipes? go? Well, again, you're going to have to ask them that. Right, but right. we're going to talk. We're, we're going to talk to them about them about this other. And see, oh, they'll just you know, give you the run around. Well, we'll see. I just like to say one more thing. Uh, um, I've been here since February of 2019, thought I was purchasing my dream home, coming back to my alma mater, um, four kids. We've been dealing with issues, I believe six breaks on our street. Um, I've been doing some research with and if you even go on to Alcopa Water's website and you scroll through their water reports, the Pennsylvania Department is even reporting the authority failed to calibrate the chlorine analyzers per EPA method 334. The authority was late in submitting chlorine results to the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. Protection. These results were sent to the DEP after the required submission dates. Right on their website, on their reports, under all their levels, it lists their violations, but yet nothing's being done. And they're publicly posting that they have violations. And we just don't know how they're getting away with it. Because they're a private entity. Yeah, we, we really are looking for guidance. We're not sure what the next steps are because it's not governed under the uh, Pennsylvania Utilities Commission and it's not a water department so it's not overseen the same way by a city council so they can change their rates anytime they so choose and it was explained to me with the previous person in the role before Mr. Bible is that it doesn't do them any good to be proactive they wait till there's a break and they can hire contractors and then if they have to pay time and a half or rent the utility the Backhoes net, they just simply pass along the charges to the residents. So, how, how do we incentivize them positively to do just meets expectations? That's really all we're looking for is at standard. That's when right. anytime you reach out, it's Matthew Modest. He, yeah. he'll, he'll come back at you and he will, he, he's very charming. And he'll say, We're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing this. But the second you ask for proof, 
you're saying you're doing this capital improvement, where's the proof that you did it? Where's the proof that you completed it? He can't give us any proof. He shared it posted on his Facebook page um, that, uh, and a Rebecca Whitaker posted, I don't care, she posted, you know, they haven't increased their rates for blah, 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 however many years, whatever. They've increased them four times. So they just, they're very good manipulators and that's why this has been going on for so long because everybody just, oh, okay, you're fixing it. You're gonna get to it. Then they don't and somebody else complains. Oh, okay, they're fixing it, they're getting to it. And then they don't and it's been going on for 30 years because they keep saying they're gonna do something and everybody keeps believing on them and they're not. And they're not doing if, anything. If we could have some goals that are time bound, that'd be great. Thank you. Pardon me? If we if we could set some goals, get them to agree to some goals that are time bound, that would be great if we yeah. could make some goals. Well, I don't I don't know if you could you could do that, but you could talk to them and see what, what plans they have so, to get things done. So if the MWAA is governed by the, the utility commission, who ultimately who's Robert Bible's boss again? City of Mount Water 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 I mean, we have, what, 250 people in our group so far? The last time I emailed them, I got an email back about four days later, and they said, we'll look into your concerns and have somebody contact you. Mm -hmm. Oh, what I'm saying is, did you, did you go to the meeting like you came here? Um, did, no. Their meeting, did you guys go to their meeting? Uh, the municipal meeting, yes. Yeah, the water no, no, authority. The, 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 water. Oh, no, the water authority, the water authority. Is I personally haven't. That's on Wednesday. But yeah, only because I had a meeting with him before that, prior to that meeting, uh, or prior to the, the meeting on Wednesday, I actually met with Robert Bible personally, and he got so mad at me, he walked out. So I didn't even bother going. But I personally, we have 250 plus members public in our group, and that's not including the other, I know not exactly what I'm going to say this, probably 400 people that are in a silent army, so to speak, behind this, that didn't reach out, or that are not in the group. But it might and I have probably 15 to 20 people that have personally messaged me that have attended the meetings, the water authority meetings, and they have been told the exact same thing um, by Matthew Modest, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right, but yes that have, have been told the same things. They're putting, us, they're putting, they're, they're using the money that they bought in to put in a new building in 2020. Um, I, I'm not sure what the building is to fix the groundwater. But then when I had my meeting with him, he told me that even once they completely eliminate the magnesium and the iron in the water, it'll still be brown. So why are you putting this building? as a top priority, using our money to, to build this building as a top priority if it's not even gonna really essentially fix anything. Put the money towards new lines. Our, just our pipes are Well, I, I think, again, I, I think this, this discussion, which we're, we're glad you came here because we're gonna talk to them. But this discussion with all you people should be at the, at the Water Authority's meeting down in Alaquipa. You know, that, and again, I'm glad you came here. We're going we're gonna to talk to them. It's not that I didn't want you to come here. Yeah. But the first place you go is to, to who's handling those things. They're the ones that can correct it. You know, so go ahead. But that's the whole point. We have all gone to them individually with the same complaints. Yeah. Over the, wait, let me finish. Over the years. And we get the same reactions, the same answers, and the same runaround. I've been doing it for 14 years. 14 years. The, the, the meetings don't not, change nothing. If we go to the meeting, they're still going to give us the same bull crap story that they're doing now. And instead of just one person bullying us, it's going to be all of us bullying us. But they're not going to do anything different. The are going to act as the advocate for us. It's ultimately under Bible. <clears throat> Okay, listen, we're, we're going to talk to them. Uh, I'd advise you to go one of their, uh, as a group, as a group of their authority. We'll talk to them, okay? Because there's nothing else we can do for you here until we talk to them anyway. Okay.
Thank We're going to move on, Thank please. You. Thank you. Thank you. you. Very yes. much. Good luck. Really do appreciate you guys hearing us out. This is, you know, we're not just trying to start start something. We are truly affected by this. And we do appreciate your time. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Hey, guys. Make sure that you all attend the meeting for Aliquippa Water Authority. It is the third Wednesday of the month, October 16th at 6 p.m. Make sure you are there.